nothing says happy first webinar in in a year than um, some technical difficulties, but we're gonna rock with it. Um, thank you for being here. Also, I have dogs in the background, so just apologies in advance all around. Um, but for real, thank you for being here. Welcome to the first Summer Transition Series webinar. Um, we are excited to have you. I'm excited for this lovely group of panelists. They are here. <laughs> Um, they are here to answer your questions. I'm going to try and stay on mute while I get my dogs wrangled. Um, but my name is Casey Johnstone. I work in um, new student programs. I'm excited to have you all here. And I'm going to kick it off with Krista. And can you popcorn to someone else? Yes, most definitely. Thank you, Casey. So my name is Krista Jones, and I work in housing assignments. So I get to answer all of your questions regarding housing today as best as I can. And I will send it over to Grayson. Hi everyone and welcome new Blue Devils. Um, my name is Grayson and I work in the dining admin office. So any dining related questions, you can send them my way. I will popcorn it over to Debbie. Hi everyone, my name is Debbie Diulia. Um, I'm with the Office of Information Technology, specifically the Duke Card Office. So any questions you have about getting your Duke Card or what it can do for you, um, we're here to help. And I will send it over to Nico. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Nico Bailey. I'm with the Duke University IT Security Office. Uh, I will be here answering any security uh, related questions, account security, computer security, and everything that falls in between that. And I will pass it off to Camille. Thanks, Nico. My name's Camille Jackson. I am the Director of Communications for the Office of Information Technology. And we're here to answer all of your technology needs. I forgot to say welcome class of 2025. Um, there's a lot of OIT representation on this call, so we hope to get your questions answered. And I will kick it over to Rodney. Rodney, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, I'm Rodney Kozar, manager of the OIT service desk and also the OIT walk-up desk located in Perkins Library, which a lot of you will probably come there during your course and time here at Duke. I'm also the manager of OIT Collaborative Services as well. Um, my main function uh, will be managing the service desk where you will contact us by phone, email, or walk up. And I will turn it over to John Gorsuch. Uh, hi, I'm John Gorsuch. I'm Associate General Manager at Duke Stores, and I oversee the Duke Technology Center. That's the computer store at Duke University, and we're owned and operated by Duke University. Uh, we're located in the lower level of the store in the Bryan Center, and um, we um, and um, we're we're open Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. Was that everybody? Did everyone have a chance to introduce themselves? No, I'm getting a no. I'll jump in. Hi, everyone. My name is David Wilcher. I'm a financial aid counselor in the undergraduate financial aid office. Happy to be here. Happy to answer your questions. Hello, everyone. Full again here. I'm a part of OIT, a mobile, mobile developer here at Duke, and I um, have had a pretty large hand in, in the development of Duke Mobile. So I'm here to answer questions related to that. Hi everybody, I'm Kirsten Marinko. I'm the marketing manager for Duke Dining. Uh, welcome, glad you're here. Um, again, any dining related questions can be sent to Grayson or myself. Awesome. So 
Again, apologies for the rocky start. Not quite sure what happened to our settings, but they got a little bit wonky. Um, so typically how this happens is there is a Q&A feature. Um, unfortunately, that is not showing up for the panelists for some reason, but we're gonna rock with it. So um, how this is gonna work is I'll be moderating the webinar today. So um, if you wanna just go ahead and start throwing any questions in your chat, please do that. And I will ask on your behalf um, and we'll get started. Yeah, first off, thank Casey, thank you so much for getting us kicked off and going. I know you have a lot going on, so we appreciate everything you're managing. I think what might be great to ask questions, continue to come in and feel free to send those just to us as panelists. Um, that's a, that's a uh, opportunity. We have our first one coming in. It might be nice if quickly our different areas can just give two to three things that are uh, important for folks to remember, right? So I don't mind kind of leading the round robin. So Krista, we're gonna start with you again. We'll do housing and then our peers and OIT and then we'll do financial aid and then dining. And then that'll allow some time for questions to come in and it will jump on those questions. So uh, Krista, we'll start with you. Excellent. Hello, everyone again. Uh, so the first kind of important deadline coming up regarding housing is that the application is due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on Monday. So the application opened on May 3rd. It closes on the 31st. So please get that in. Um, I know that many of you are still awaiting some of your focus program decisions and different things like that. That's okay. Those things can continue to come to us, but please submit the application first prior to receiving those final decisions and information. Same thing if you're working through Student Disability and Access Office for any kind of accommodations, we can receive that information after your application has been submitted. Um, you can also go in and edit your application as many times as necessary. So if you're reviewing it and you're like, oh, darn it, I answered that question not the correct way, you can go back in through the housing portal, access that application, and change that preference for yourself. And you have until the same timeline, 11.59 p.m. Eastern on Monday, to make any final changes that you have. And then we will be releasing assignments on June 16th, and that will go to your email, and you'll be directed to the housing portal to review your assignment information. That will include the room type that you've been assigned to, if it's a double or single, as well as um, if you've been assigned to a double room, who your roommate is, which I know is very exciting. Um, and I will conclude there. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Krista. We have several representatives from OIT here. So Camille, I'm going to start with you and maybe you can give a broad overview of the OIT team. That'll be helpful. And then we'll move on to, to a different uh, portion of the, the panelists here. Sure. Thanks, Jordan. And that sounds good. Um, so the, the first resource I want to mention, just to give an overview, if you go to oit.duke.edu and search for uh, new to Duke, you'll see their uh, students page, um, new students page with all information for getting you started. Um, but we have some representatives from OIT with key information for you, and they're all here on this call, so you can ask questions. Um, you can ask about your NetID, your Duke card, of course, Duke Mobile. Um, security is really, really important. And I think John Gorsuch from the computer stores has a special message about um, computers if you need a computer. So um, I'll just kick it over to John. Hey, John. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, the Duke Technology Center uh, carries uh, Macintosh, Lenovo, Dell, and for the first time this year, we're offering the Microsoft Surface. Um, the, um, uh, the, the scary news that's going on now, and this is a worldwide problem that actually affects everybody, is there's a chip and glass shortage. And those are two critical things in the computer. And we uh, are trying to anticipate what um, what students are going to want, need for this coming school year. And we've placed uh, orders to anticipate that. Uh, but to ensure that you're gonna get a computer in time for school is it's important for you to order as soon as possible. Waiting to make that decision in July or August could be a little dicey whether you get a computer in time for your classes or not. 
So we'd like to encourage you to order now. And um, uh, I think Camille is posting uh, the location for where they can log in to place their orders online. Right, Camille? I'm, okay. I'm about to, yes. I'm about okay, to she's that. about to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I also wanted to get Debbie into the call because she has important information about Ducard. Thanks, Camille. Um, the main thing I want to remind everyone is just to be sure off the site that Camille just sent the new, to, um, new Duke student page off OIT is to submit your Ducard photo as soon as possible. You won't be able to get your Ducard when you get here if you haven't submitted your photo or be able to use um, the mobile do card. So you want to be sure you get that in, make sure you get a message saying it was approved. Um, if, if you need to resubmit it, that's fine. You can do that all online. So that would be um, one of your first things that you should get in and, and do for us. Great. Thank you, OIT team. And I'm sure there'll be other updates. And if people have questions, I'm glad we have a lot of people here to kind of help answer those. Can we pivot over to our peers in dining? Tell us about all this great food. Students are going to get a chance to eat in the marketplace. Hi, everyone. Um, so first year students will be automatically rolled into dining plan I upon confirming your housing assignment. So no action is needed there on um, your end. And the first year um, dining plan consists of um, food swipes. And you'll receive 14 food swipes each week. Um, so you'll have five breakfast meals, one per day, Monday through Friday. You'll have two brunch meals, Saturday and Sunday, and seven dinner meals. Um, all other food outside of breakfast and dinner and brunch are used the way of food points. So for lunch and for snacks, you can use food points. And um, food points are used to supplement um, the dining plans. And each food point is equivalent to $1 and is accessed with using your due card. And um, you can use this to buy meals or snacks at any on-campus eatery. You can use it on our mer Merchants on Point system. Um, these are local vendors from the community who will deliver um, outside your residence halls. Um, and you can use it for food trucks and the C stores on campus, including the vending machines. Um, if you do miss a breakfast swipe, um, there's three ways towards breakfast and you can do this at the skillet and um, Trinity, and of course, at the marketplace um, to do a, a breakfast equivalency. And if you miss a dinner swipe that day, um, it can be applied um, towards Trinity, which is below marketplace, or um, at the Freeman Center Cafe, Monday through Thursday. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Awesome, thank you, Grayson. And I think it might be nice to pivot to David. And David, I will tell you, after you do your piece of financial aid, the first couple of questions are for you. So get ready to answer and then get ready to take some questions. <laughs> Great, thanks so much, Jordan. Um, sure, so things to keep in mind as we move toward the summer and the fall semester. Um, first up, if you're not familiar with proxy access or guest access for your parents, it's a way that you can set up your parents' access to your Duke information. It's very granular, so if you want them to have access to, let's say, your bursar bills and your financial aid, but not your grades, you can set that up. It's a really great tool um, to get them that information proactively. Number two, health insurance. So if you're gonna need the Duke student health insurance and you're on financial aid and you'd like financial aid to pay for it, be on the lookout, it's around August, this will happen, uh, but you'll be asked to fill out some information for student health. Um, so it's just something to keep on your radar in August, be aware that you'll need to fill something out for student health if you'd like financial aid to pay for your student health insurance. Number three, um, if you're looking for loans, if you're interested in maybe uh, federal loans or private loans to help with um, your parent contribution or other expenses, um, you might want to uh, be aware that, especially with the federal loans, private loans, it can take some time. Um, so, you know, being on top of that, getting organized in June or July um, will be very helpful. Um, and you won't, you'll find you won't be late for your bill that way. So if you're interested in additional loans, we'd encourage you to, to start looking at those in June or July rather than August or September. Um, and then yes, we had a couple 
uh, financial aid questions already in the chat. Really great questions. One was about, you know, how do we how do we notify you of external scholarships? And this is an especially good question this year because we're actually changing our process. And it's so new that we, we don't actually have that process yet. So I would say stay tuned. Um, we're going to update our, info, our, our website with that information in the next month or so. Um, and we'll have that process streamlined as you can get that information to us. And when you do send the external scholarship check to Duke, keep in mind that you should send it to the cashier's office, which is not the same as financial aid. Um, and that address is on our website and also the bursar's website. And then we had an additional question about when will I find out who my financial aid counselor is. Um, that'll be um, hopefully in the next month or two, we'll get you squared away over the summer. Awesome. Thank you for the introductions um, and a little the tidbits about your each of your teams. Um, I do, before we really get into it, just want to say um, this is a series, so we'll be hosting multiple webinars. So if you if we don't ask your question, it's probably because it's better suited for a different webinar. So don't think that we're ignoring you. Um, we just want to make sure that we're making use of the time of the folks that are in the space right now. Um, so with that, we will go ahead next down the line after the financial aid advisor was a question about um, about Max, um, my understanding is Max need to be adapted for Windows to work with the engineering programs. Um, so, could you talk a little bit about um, like specific specific computers needed for different programs, um, and will you be able to use the new chip for engineering? Uh, yeah, you can you can use your MacBook for for engineering. Uh, I think one of the questions was. Uh, will we help you set it up? Yes, we'll help you set it up uh, in Perkins library, library at the link walk-up desk. We'll dual boot your machine and make sure that you get Windows on there and you will be able to use it with the new chip without any issues. Um, Pratt does not give us any uh, laptop specifications um, for machines if you're using a Mac or if you go to Windows. Uh, but yes, it is a common thing to still use a Mac if you're familiar with it and have continued using them um, during your high school years. Awesome. Next question is heading to you, Krista. Um, can we ship items from home to Duke to be stored on campus ahead of move-in? If so, to what address can we send it or where can they find that information and how far in advance? Excellent, great question. So um, typically when we share move-in details, which is mid to late July, that is when we also share information regarding mailing including how to mail items to yourself as well as packages. So you can begin sending to your stuff to yourself early. However, it's usually a very short window, typically not more than two weeks prior to move in. Um, so please don't start trying to send something to East Campus now because it's not gonna, not gonna make it and stay here for you uh, when you actually move in. So those details do come. We need to wait for assignments. We need to wait for things to kind of iron out and flesh out. And then you'll receive very specific move-in details and we'll have all of your mailing questions included at that time towards the end of July. Awesome. I see in the chat, there was a question about difference between a Duke card and a NetID. Um, just to make sure that everyone got the response to that Duke card think of it like your driver's license like it is a physical card or you can have it on your phone it gets you access to buildings meal plans all of that good stuff um and then your net id is more of like think of it like your username i guess is a way to say that um it's like it's your username um it's it's specific to you everyone has their own um, specific net ID. So those are the, the kind of two differences between the two of those. Um, let's see, there's a question about software to install on computers. So is there a particular software, software we need to pre-install on our computers before we arrive on campus? There isn't any specific software, just please don't go out and buy Microsoft Office because you can get that free after you um, set up your net ID and your net ID password. Uh, Adobe is free as well. Um, and if you're interested in any other software that's provided here for free, 
uh, just go to software.duke.edu and you'll be able to download anything that you want for there. So please check that before buying any software uh, before coming to campus. Great. Okay, next question. Lost my place in chat. Um, well, that's a, there's a question about health insurance. I'm gonna save that for June 9th, which is when we'll have our health and wellness webinar. Um, there was a question about being able to view the recording of this webinar. Yes, so the webinar is being recorded. We'll be posting it to the Duke New Student Program's YouTube channel. Um, so you'll be able to, to see either like recap everything or if you miss something going and seeing it then. Um, there's a question about jobs on campus. So if one is deferring potential work study until spring, when do you typically apply for jobs and are you committed to it? Is anyone able to talk about that? I can say a, a few words about that. So um, it's completely normal if, if a, a student doesn't wanna take a work study job until spring or late in the fall, or maybe not even at all, um, that, that is completely normal. Um, essentially what happens is you just don't earn that money. And work study is paid to you like a paycheck. It's not automatically put against your Duke bill. Um, you, uh, you, know, you, you look for a job, you interview for a job, you, you get a job, you go to the job, you get paid via direct deposit as a paycheck to you, you spend it on, you know whatever you would spend that on um so it it doesn't it, it doesn't affect a student's bill in the way i think a lot of families uh, assume it might and so since it work study is a job you would apply whenever you know you're you're feeling that that's a, a choice you want to be making so the oftentimes the best place to look for a job is duke list duke list.duke.edu um it's it's a great uh, space for finding those types of listings. And I think whenever you're ready to start that application process, you could go there and, and see what's available. Also, one other tidbit, the, the link does hire um, student workers that we we're just talking about. Uh, we do have a posting currently on list.duke. Um, and it's okay if you don't want to work your first semester. We advise that you do take the first semester and get acquainted to school. But if you are interested in technology or just having a nice cool place to work down in the library to get to play with a lot of things or interested in software, hardware, a little troubleshooting, um, please come by, visit us or um, look at us on Duke list and apply. Nice little subtle plug. <laughs> Um, David, I have another question for you. If you receive enough scholarship funds to cover federal loans listed on your financial aid offer, how does the opting out of loans process work? Is it automatic? That's a great question. So you're right that when a student on financial aid receives external scholarships, we're going to reduce or remove your loans or work study um, until all of that is gone. You don't have to worry about setting that up. Essentially, when you report your external scholarships to our office, we'll go in and adjust your aid award accordingly. Awesome. Um, next question is, could you talk a little bit more about the student purchase plan for computers? Uh, Camille, put a link on the chat about it, but just some highlights of it is um, uh, we still encourage you to go ahead and place your order as soon as possible, but when you would actually pick up your computer is during orientation week and how the uh, we do the uh, contractual paperwork, we can't do it until the semester starts, which would be orientation week and uh, we require 25% down, it's at a 7% uh, interest rate, and you make one payment per semester for the length of your tenure at Duke University. Awesome, jumping back to Krista, um, I know before we talked about like single rooms and you, you um, so the question is, are single rooms limited? 
Uh, that's a very good question. Yes, they are extremely limited. Um, so just to provide some perspective, we have about 1,700 first-year students that we typically house on East Campus, and only about 400 of those beds are actually single rooms. Okay, next question. So there are two different numbers, your Duke unique ID and a student ID. What is the difference and when do I use each one? I'll just say that the Duke Unique ID um, is listed on your Duke card, on the back of your Duke card. Um, most of the things, at least in IT, you're gonna be asked for your Duke ID. Um, I think, and I'm not sure, the student ID is more on the um, admin side, but... Your, your, your um, like Debbie said, in IT or service desk will ask for not ID majority of the time. Uh, your unique, like you said, is on the back of your car. Your student ID um, is usually housed in um, Duke Hub in the SIS office, um, use it a lot. Um, they won't, most students won't be required to give it uh, once they go to different places on campus. It'll all start with your net ID. And then in the background, we'll be able to see your unique ID or your student ID if need be, but your student ID won't be used a lot. I will jump in quickly and say that for housing, we use your unique ID pretty much for everything. So if we can't kind of verify who you might be through your email, because that's typically how you communicate with us, we will then ask for your unique ID. Yeah, more often than, than not, your, your unique ID will be, will be used. Um, there's a question about um, having issues accessing Duke email. Um, so for some reason, I can't make my Duke email through the Duke ID login. Is there another shortcut or what can people who are having issues with accessing their Duke email do? Um, you probably want to just give us a call at the service desk. If you go to oit.duke.au, click on help. Um, there's a contact number there for us at the service desk. There's also a chat that you can start, and there's also a way that you can submit a ticket, fill out your issue, um, leave us a phone number or email. A good email is working, and we can contact you back. Um, we're open starting Sundays from 3 p.m., and we stay open 24 hours a day until Friday um, at 5 p.m., so you can call us any time of the day, middle of the night, and we'll answer the phone um, or your chat, and then we'll help walk you through your issue um, if we're having trouble finding out what it is, we can also remote it to your machine as well and walk you through it and help you out. Amazing. And that's super important because all official communications from the university moving forward will be sent to your Duke email. So if that's something that you do not have access to or you are having issues accessing, um, it's really important that you get that um, sorted out because that is how you will, you'll miss a lot if you do not check your Duke email. Um, the next question is for our folks in dining. Um, is there a list of places that food points can be used on the Duke Dining website? I didn't know if you wanted to take this as an opportunity to kind of talk through some of the, the um, dining options on campus. Yes, sure. So, um, and I also saw a question about um, if it was gonna like be buffet style for dinner. So I'll go ahead and answer that too. Um, we have over 30 retail locations on campus and um, those are mainly on West Campus. So for lunch, when you have your food points to use, you can come over to West Campus and we have a big variety of foods. Um, and for marketplace there, it is the buffet style for breakfast and dinner and brunch on the weekends and lunch is set up as an a la carte. Um, what else, Casey? Does that sound good? Yeah. 
Um, there's a question about um, back on the topic of work study jobs. Are work study jobs only open to students with financial aid? Sure. So that's a great question. Um, it, work study is available to students with work eligibility in North Carolina. So that includes citizens and permanent residents and other folks who have the ability to work in North Carolina. Um, but it's a great point because um, so even if you're not eligible for financial aid as need-based financial aid, you can still get work study. So all students who have that work, uh, work eligibility can get work study. Um, and the way you access that is by filling out the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Even if you're not eligible for federal work study after filling out the FAFSA, we would give you what's called Duke work study, which would give you the same benefits. Um, so that, that's a great question. Another one for you. Um, when can we officially accept um, our financial aid within Duke Hub? Sure, sure. Another great question. Again, this will happen later this summer. Um, your grant aid is already accepted for you because we assume you want that. So the question is really just um, when can you accept your federal student loans and when can you accept your work study? Um, both of those processes are, are very quick. Um, the, the federal student loans, there's no application process for that. Um, so there's no need to worry if you're worried about, um, you know, making sure that happens before, before the first bill comes out or before classes start or anything like that. Um, accepting your loans and work study will open up probably in about a, about a month or so this summer, um, and then you'll have it all taken care of. Awesome. Another one for you. <laughs> um, so can you use additional outside scholarship money to get a computer? Also a great question. I I will say that this, this applies in a, a, a very small number of cases. So what we're talking about is, you know, since external scholarships are going to replace the loan and replace the work study, typically students are awarded with $5,000 of loans and $2,200 of work study. So the question is really, if I've received over $7,200 of external scholarships, um, can I take advantage of the excess by buying a computer? And the answer is maybe. Um, you should talk to your financial aid counselor. <laughs> so I'd encourage you to reach out to us uh, at FinAid, F-I-N-A-I-D at duke.edu um, and, and ask your question, ask to be put in touch with your counselor and, and we'll get you situated. Awesome, thank you. Um, there's a question that came up about the blue book. Jordan, I'm gonna throw it to you. Um, is there somewhere we can find all of this information? Is it in the blue book? I don't know if you want to give your little your elevator spiel for the blue. No, book. Thank, thank you, Casey. That's hilarious. Um, hopefully, hopefully the majority of your questions can be answered by the blue book. Um, it's bluebook.duke.edu. Um, we have a tab dedicated specifically for current first year students. Um, if there are parents on this call, there's a space also dedicated to parents. Thank you to Grace Sullivan and the parent family team for that. Um, and a lot of the questions that you that you might have, you can start there. Um, it has a section dedicated to living, uh, to learning if you're a Pratt or a Trinity student, to the registration process, um, and then to pieces for orientation. So it's a great place to start, but let it just be that. Let it be a place to start. And then if you have additional questions, programs like this and other initiatives are helpful in, in your transition. But bluebook.duke.edu is a great place to start. Uh, we don't have a password protected yet so parents you know there's some also some things you can look at if you wanted to see some of the things your students are seeing but um it, it is a really good place to just get your initial questions at least answered and if more come up our team and other people around campus are here and ready to help awesome and again that's um in the past it's in the past has been a physical mailing, um, but we have embraced the digital age. So it is a virtual blue book. Um, so bluebook.duke.edu, it's got all, all you need. Um, all right, I'm scrolling through these questions. Feel free, if you have additional ones, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, I have a couple of housing related questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify them a little bit. So the first, well, the first question is, um, do most students who sign up for single rooms get them, or is there a good chance many of those students will get doubles? 
excellent question. So uh, we have students typically want single rooms, as I'm sure you're thinking as you write that question. I really want a single room. What are my chances? Um, many of your peers want the same. So therefore, uh, there's a high chance for those students who prefer single rooms that they will instead receive a double room assignment. I shared a little bit earlier that just about a third of our housing options on East Campus are single rooms. That's it. Um, so majority of the first year class will be in doubles with a wonderful roommate. <laughs> um, and then there was another question that came up um, specifically about um, dorms for in the arts community, but I didn't know if you wanted to share a little bit about the setup of East Campus housing um, and some of the specific communities that exist within it. Yeah, definitely. So on East Campus, we have, um, I think 13 buildings online for this upcoming year. It always kind of changes. Um, and so we have two specific living learning communities. That's the arts community, performing arts community, as well as the substance free community. Um, they change locations from year to year. So they're not always in the same specific building or house, if you will. Um, and we typically wait to make decisions regarding where those communities are until after the application closes. So next week we'll be reviewing our applications and who wants what uh, and make those decisions on where those communities should live. And that's the same for focus programs. So um, if you have applied to be in a focus program, your, where your cluster will live will also change. It's not the same from year to year. Um, and so we'll be making those decisions as well. But all of that kind of shifts and changes um, from one academic year to the next. There was a question that was sent ahead of time um, and it's kind of a, it's a mix of housing and financial aid. So it's asking um, for first years who receive financial aid, um, do singles cost the same as doubles? Is that always the case? Sure, I can answer that one. Um, and the answer is yes. So if you're receiving grant aid in your financial aid package, Duke grant aid, um, then not only for first year students, but for all undergraduate students, um, if your if your actual cost for housing is greater than your financial aid for housing, um, once dropout is ended, once you've decided where you're going to be living for the year, then we're going to adjust your financial aid and give you additional grant aid to cover the difference between the financial aid that we originally gave you and the cost uh, for the room for which you're being billed. So all that's to say is that um, your out-of-pocket cost, whether you're in a double or a single um, or as an upperclassman, uh, you know, a less expensive room or a more expensive room, your out-of-pocket cost will be the same. Awesome. Um, next question is um, same or still on that, that path, but um, how do you decide who gets the single preference? Is it random? Yes, excellent question. And I saw another question right after that that I'll, I'll touch on as well. Um, but yes, it is completely random. So I love our first year housing assignment process, and I'll talk a little bit about that briefly. Um, pretty much every component within the or the assignment process is truly random. So we have a computer system that formulates an algorithm based upon your preferences and tries to pair you up with a roommate that matches your lifestyle preferences and gets you as high matching rate as possible. Um, so that's how that decision is made. Uh, and that's also the location on where you're actually physically assigned and therefore to what room type is also random. Um, again, all through the computer algorithm and they it automatically assigns everyone for us. The only thing that isn't necessarily random is if you're in a focus program because those clusters are all together. But still, after that, whether you get a single or double, that becomes random as well. Um, and so because of that, because of the, I think what I find to value very much and the randomness of our assignment process, there's no way for you to express interest in any specific housing uh, buildings. So you can't say, I only want Trinity or I only want Wilson or whatever your heart is kind of landing for you. Um, it's completely random. Therefore, we do not collect those preferences from you.
Um, and then the most recent question that just popped in is which dorms have single rooms in them? Oh, great. Yeah, all of our housing options on East have single room options within every building. Awesome. Um, we have another question that was submitted ahead of time and it asks, it's a question for Duke stores. Let me find it. Um, does the Duke online store ship internationally is the question. Uh, they don't ship, we don't ship computers internationally. As far as sweatshirt, t-shirts, that kind of gifty stuff, I'm not, they, I think there's a way that they can do that. So the best is contact um, the online store. All right, next question is, when should we anticipate paying our first bill to Duke? Sure, so I can I can tackle this one. Um, the bursar's office is actually the office that receives and uh, receives payments, manages payments, um, and they have a, a list of when you'll receive the bills and when the bills are due on their website. Um, I believe it the first bill is anticipated to be maybe late July, early August, and then due late August, early September. But um, I I uh, I would encourage you to check out their website. <laughs> they have that listed there, hopefully. Awesome, thank you. Um, I do I do see a few questions asking about um, prios and immunization and student health. Um, and again, I'm just gonna say we have some, we have professionals coming later in the series to answer those questions. So I'm gonna hold off hold off on asking those because I wanna make sure that um, we can get to all of the questions for the folks in the room right now. Um, let's see, I'm scrolling through the chat, scrolling through the chat. So um, there's a, there's a request just to talk a little bit more about loans um, and don't fully understand what I need to do to claim them or how they really work. Can you speak on that a little bit more? Sure. So again, the, the loans that we've included as part of your financial aid award, you'll be able to log into Duke Hub under financials and accept those later this summer, uh, probably in about a month. Um, and we'll send you an email to let you know that that's open. So um, again, there's no application process for those federal student loans. So it's just a matter of logging in, you know, clicking accept, maybe signing a promissory note if you need to, um, and then they'll be automatically applied to your account um, once the fall semester starts. Um, a few additional words about those loans. So the loans that you have re received as part of your aid award, if you did, um, those are federal student loans. Um, they are in the student's name. They tend to be the best possible loans that students and families might be eligible for. They have very advantageous repayment options. Um, the interest rate in this past year was about 2.75%, uh, which is very good. Um, so if you are looking for loans, those federal student loans tend to be one of the best options. Um, and the amount that any student would be eligible for is dependent on your year in school. Um, so for a first year student, that's going to be $5,500, of which probably $5,000 was already included in your aid award. If you'd like access to that additional 500, you can just send us an email and we'll be able to add that to your financial aid award. Um, and then after those, after you've maximized those federal student loans, often families are going to look toward federal parent loans like PLUS loans or private loans. Um, and if you're interested in private loans or additional information about loans, I'd encourage you to look at our website, um, financialaid.duke.edu. We have a whole section on loans and on recommended lenders that can be very helpful. Um, I do know that we're 
coming up on time. There are a few questions that have been asked and answered via the chat, um, but I did want to go ahead and at least give the answer verbally for those who are unable to see the chat. Um, there was a question about um, if you were to order something in particular like a computer, um, do you pick it up on campus? Does it get shipped to the house? What does that look like? Um, and the answer for that is you can have your computer, the computer shipped to you for $45 um, or you can pick it up when you arrive on campus. That has been, that was a question and answer that happened in the chat. Um, another one that happened is there was a question of, is there a laundry room or is there laundry in each dorm? Um, and yes, there are laundry units within each building on East campus. So wanted to just make sure we could get those, um, get those out there. There is another financial question. How do I set up the monthly payment plan? Sure, so the monthly payment plan is managed by a third party uh, called Nelnet um, in conjunction with the bursar's office. And typically what families do is once they receive their first bill in the fall, they decide how much of that they want to pay for with a, a payment plan. And then they would contact Nelnet um, and set that up with them. Awesome. There was another question in the chat about um, it says the, excuse me, the dorms all seem different. Are there room dimensions and things so that we know what can fit? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So yes, all of our buildings on East Campus are quite unique from one another, but then also even within those buildings, the rooms greatly differ from one to the next. So um, it's not as easy as I can say, all rooms in Trinity are this size, or all rooms in Elspa are this size, because they've vastly differ. Um, but what you can do is after you receive your housing assignment, feel free to reach out to housing at duke.edu and we can try and offer as much guidance on what the size of room may be for uh, your student. And then also what I would say, um, and this is just kind of like for anyone um, who's looking and moving onto campus, maybe wait to purchase some of those things um, until you're actually physically in the space and can see what you will need because it will change um it'll change from the day you see the space till a month after you're actually living in the room and you realize wow i really need this to store my food or whatever the case might be so as much as you want to prepare ahead of time try your best to kind of wait to see what that space is like connect with your roommate both be there together and try and make those decisions together regarding who's going to store what where and how Um, there's a question, will we know our room and dorm when we receive housing assignments? Great question. So yes, when you receive your housing assignment, you will know the room number, the building that you've been assigned to, the room, the, uh, room type, if it's a single or double. And if it's a, d a double, you will also know the name of their, your roommate and their Duke email address. After that, you all can share cell phone numbers or whatever other social media you want to connect to us, but we will only share your Duke email address. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, we have a question. It says, if I'm not buying a computer at the Duke, like through the Duke store, can I still receive free IT support from Duke? Yeah, she can still receive free um, tech support or any type of support at the walk-up desk in Perkins. All right, I'm scrolling through the chat just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, I believe, I believe we hit everything. If you have any last minute burning questions, you absolutely don't wanna leave without it getting answered. Please, please, please post it right now. Um, in the meantime, just wanted to ask our panelists if they had any sort of closing thoughts, um, whether that's given the questions or just in general. 
Uh, one quick thing, <clears throat> um, ePrint is offered to all students, so printing is free for black and white, so don't bring your own printer. You have ePrint there. Uh, also for security, don't bring your own wireless router. We will make sure that you get wireless coverage in your rooms, so don't bring your own wireless router and try to hook it up in your room. And if I can piggyback off of uh, what Rodney was saying there for security, uh, a couple of important things that we want you folks to know about um, is one, you know, securing your NetID earlier. Uh, David mentioned this, um, but granting your parents proxy access to your account. Never share your password with anybody, especially your parents, uh, because what that'll look like for us is we'll see multiple people from multiple parts of the world logging into your account. We're going to assume your account is compromised. There's, you know, an attacker doing something in your account. Chances are your account may get locked if you do that. So take advantage of, uh, you know, granting your parents proxy access. The other um, tip that I'll leave is uh, enrolling in multi-factor authentication. Uh, if you go to oit.duke.edu slash MFA, uh, you set up your account to require a secondary form of authentication so that you can successfully log into your accounts. And that will also help aid in your account being compromised. And to that effect, uh, Duke Unlock. Um, Duke Unlock is uh actually a um newer service i think it's we've been using it for about two-ish years now um maybe a little less uh and essentially for for devices that have uh biometric login available fingerprint um face id things like that you can actually use those and register those devices to log into your services so you don't have to worry about you know setting up password um or, or remembering your password all the time, type your password in, you know, it's easy as, you know, scanning a fingerprint or looking at your device and letting it scan your face, you know, just like you would with your iPhone now or your Android device and, and logging in. Um, and then there was one question that came in for proxy access. Um, proxy access is essentially granting your parents the ability to view grades. And there are a few other things I, I don't have specific bits for, but view grades, view classes you're taking and things like that. So they can actually log in and, you know, if they want to uh, see how you're doing without actually having to say, let me have your net ID and password so I can log in and check it myself. You, you grant them access that, you know, gets them a separate account. It's kind of how that works. I had one quick thing to add too, as far as dining goes, I just wanted to mention that in addition to the huge variety of food that we have on campus, we do offer um, several program elements that, that are very fun that I'll wanna encourage you to take advantage of. Um, some of those are cooking classes and uh, chef demos and then marketplace. Um, although it was a little bit different this past year because of COVID, um, we typically offer um, large themed dinners at Marketplace once a month. So I just wanna make sure that you keep an eye out for that. We'll post it on our website and our social media um, and a newsletter that you can subscribe to to stay updated as well. So thanks. So Krista gave a subtle, a subtle plug about the housing application. Again, it's due May 31st, it's coming up sooner sooner than you think. Um, so make sure that you get your application submitted by 1159 Eastern Standard Time. Um, there were, and just real quick, there were a couple questions that came in and responses came in via the chat. And so again, I just wanna make sure that we can verbalize them for folks who don't, or who aren't able to see the chat. Um, there was a question of, what is the benefit of buying a computer from the, the Duke store versus buying from somewhere else? Um, and the response that was typed was the Duke Technology Center offers educational pricing for the best price on a computer, also free on-campus computer loaner if it needs repair or service. Um, so that's a cool, um, helpful perk of on campus versus elsewhere. Um, there was a question about what is the process for purchasing school textbooks given financial aid? Um, and the answer for that was um, consideration for books is included in your financial aid award. Um, so you can buy your textbooks anywhere or look into options like using the library. Um, and then the, a follow-up to that was, um, 
is it possible to hold holdover funds from external scholarships from the present school year um, for the next school year when such funds are even more necessary? Um, and so there was a note about external scholarships um, saying, please, or please notify financial aid of your external scholarships before classes begin in the fall. Um, they will share the external scholarship reporting process later this summer. Um, external scholarships cannot be delayed until a later aid year by Duke, but you can ask your external scholarship organization whether they'd be willing to issue your scholarship in a later year. Um, so yeah. And yes, you can buy a computer at Duke anytime. I hope that we were able to get to everybody's question. Um, for those of you who were not able to join us at all, um, or were only able to join for part, just as a reminder, we are recording this. Um, this will be posted to the Duke New Student Programs YouTube channel, um, probably later this week or early next week. Um, so you can watch back, get all the information you need. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to all of our panelists. I appreciate your time today and thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you to everyone else for, um, for, for your patience as, as we kick off the series um, with a little bit of a rocky start and not having the Q&A feature like we had anticipated, but um, thanks for being flexible and making it work. We're excited to have you while, uh, starting at Duke soon um, and let us know how we can be helpful. Um, our, our main point of contact with the new student programs office is studentorientation at duke.edu. If you have any thoughts, questions, need help with anything, feel free to reach out to us and we'll get you headed in the right direction. But awesome, thank you.